So it's been a while since I did an update video. I wanted to fill everybody in kind of on the project status of where I'm at. I kind of got sidetracked on some stuff. Some other projects came up, uh, work and so on. So I am finally back into this. I got it all uncovered. It kind of got piled up in boxes with other stuff going on in the garage and whatnot. So it's all uncovered. I got a lot of the little stuff fixed. I had a couple of leaks the last time I ran it. Uh, coolant leak and I still have an oil leak somewhere that I haven't found but got a lot of the stuff worked out kind of got it running without the IAC valve uh, in operation just by popping the throttle blades up here a little bit popping them open um, got it to run got it to heat up it was my first uh, full heat cycle with mega squared at least I've only run this car about something like 50 miles since I got it or probably even more like 20 miles since I got it uh, on the stock ECU. So it was kind of nice to get it warm back up again and after the head gasket swap and make sure everything's good. So the good news about that is that most everything worked. It was kind of puffing some black smoke that I think is too much fuel, but I'll, I'll get to that part later. Um, the bad news is that the stock ECU at the time had decided it would no longer do its function. So at the moment, the only thing that the stock ECU is really going to do is control the alternator uh, voltage regulator so basically telling the alternator when to charge the battery and when not to um, it's going to be running the air conditioner but I'm not worried at all about that right now uh, and it's also going to be taking care of the cooling fans now I can make Megasquirt do that it takes an extra output an extra relay and I can wire that in if that's my only problem but I've got to get the alternator working again. Um, the stock ECU should be working fine. I'm not sure exactly what's up. If I pull a coolant relay, it winds about the coolant relay circuit. So I think that's all good. I just rewired some of the sensors, kind of spliced them back in uh, to the original harness, and uh, it should all be good to go. Hooked an OBD2 scanner up to it, and I get live values for everything. So. Uh, the next time I get a chance to fire this up, it's a little too late right now, but the next time I fire it up, I will be uh, hoping that it decides to control the cooling fans, because basically I just started boiling the coolant and had to kind of shut it down. Um, can install a switch or something, of course, but I don't really want to do that. So, anyway, that's it for uh, kind of a quick update. I finally got a chance to sit down and look at some of these Megasquirt logs from when the engine was running last. And I noticed that uh, I was actually, these big green spikes are sink loss reasons. So if you get the cursor right on the sink loss reason, uh, you can find out its reason, I believe it's 27, uh, which if you look it up, it just says 420A. So I'm not really sure on that. I haven't really asked on the forums or anything, but. Uh, I thought I would take a look and uh, work on my cabling a little bit better. Instead of using that microphone cable uh, that I showed in a previous video, it wasn't really true twisted pair. Might have even mentioned that when I was putting it in. Um, but it had really good shielding, so I thought it would be fine. So I've now switched that over to just a uh, shielded twisted pair cable and uh, grounded that out right on the connector basically uh, with no hardly any cable unshielded so it's in a lot better shape now I'm hoping next time I start it that these issues will go away um, but you can definitely see as these green spikes come up which is just a sink event or a sink loss event rather uh, you can see a drop here in white which is RPM so um, it's losing spark or whatever it's doing there but that's happening every uh, 15 or 20 seconds or so it's kind of just sputting out uh, just spitting out fuel basically and not not getting spark and just generally running poorly so that's hopefully fixed now uh, got under the car and re-soldered all that rewired it all for I guess that would be my third time to do that one but um, that's about it on uh, on mega square logs for now I don't really have that much information yet I uh, hope to run it soon and get some more logs and start really playing with the tuning. While I'm wrapping up loose ends, I thought 
it was a little strange that my air fuel ratio here when I was running the car was just a couple of points off uh, of what the gauge said and then I realized uh, I had made a pretty stupid mistake and I actually thought I had an innovative LC1 but really I have an uh, MTXL so if you go into tools calibrate AFR here um, you can pick which sensor you have and so you'll want to come down and I've read that the LC1 and the MTXL are the same but what I did or what I'm going to try out next is uh, you can actually come down and select custom linear wideband and you can give it the points so uh, for instance out of the manual uh, it says point one is uh, zero volts or I'm sorry point one here so the bottom side says zero volts is uh, 7.35 AFR and five volts here is I think it's 22.39 uh, whoops 22.39 so then you just write that to the controller and assuming your wideband is pretty linear uh, that should work uh, I think these are you know lit, they're already linearized on the analog output so that should do a pretty good job if you aren't uh, seeing the correct numbers on your gauge versus in the software so if you you gotta pick one to trust basically but I think that should uh, make Megasquirt match up. I'll hopefully test that out uh, in the next few days when I'm running the motor and make sure that all that's good to go. So just to wrap up some of this wiring stuff, hopefully, um, it's worth mentioning that uh, I kind of made a mistake when I was wiring initially on my on my other uh, wiring video and basically I misinterpreted the Simtech Labs uh, wiring diagram to where this line here is actually coming out of the ASD relay or the fuel pump relay so call that your main relay uh, as some of the other diagrams uh, call it and this 12 volt line is kind of my my high power line that comes out of my relay and so I actually um, wire this 12 volt that the Megasquirt needs and I wire that right into uh, the output of this main relay so the problem with doing that, or at least a problem I have run into but not been able to really replicate, is that if this fuse blows the way I have it wired over to here, um, if that fuse blows, then the Megasquirt is not necessarily able to keep these injectors from being grounded. So there's a transistor in there they could potentially build up a charge and, and turn on uh, essentially. Uh, I don't have exactly the full story on that and I don't know that I ever really will try to figure it out but what it meant for me is that I reached down to check out my injectors and they were too hot to touch. Basically burned my finger because this fuse was gone. Uh, I've tested that with a meter and I can't get the same results uh, but essentially if you're gonna wire it like I did be very careful or just realize that this fuse needs to always have power and so if it blows it's bad news basically so the right way to do it actually Simtech Labs had it right here but I kind of misread that and uh, that was my fault um, what's interesting though is DIY Auto-Tune does show it as a main relay so you actually power your Megasquirt off of this 3 amp fuse here goes over into the the unit if this blows you've still got 12 volts on one side of your injector the other side's grounded through the mega squirt but the mega squirt can't necessarily or I should say might not necessarily be able to keep current from flowing here which with low impedance injectors like I have means they get about like 55 watts each and it's pretty bad news so the right way to do that is more like uh, either Simtech Lab Shows or uh, this MS Extra document here. Basically the main relay clicks on and it powers the fuel pump uh, relay which then in turn powers all the rest of this stuff. The only exclusion there is that the Megasquirt, this 3 amp fuse from the other diagram is powered right off of your main relay. So the Megasquirt then is what's in charge of this green line here and the green line does not seem to share the same problem I had. 
So as long as you, the mega squirt kicks on the fuel pump relay, then your injectors, your fuel pump, and your uh, coils, which I don't know where they are in this one, they may not be shown, but uh, your coils, injector, and fuel pump all have power all the time. So, uh, and that's that's going to be only when uh, the relay uh, inject, or I'm sorry, the relay, re <laughs> the fuel pump relay is enabled. So that's about it. I wish I had some more to update, but it's been kind of slow going and haven't been super motivated on it, but finally back and uh, ready to finish up, drive this thing around, do some tuning, hopefully do some videos on tuning at some point, and uh, just go out and do some burnouts and have fun in this thing, get it out of the garage. I'm ready to move on. Thanks for following along with me, and if you like these videos, then go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I'll try to keep some more of them coming.